you know you're short, your legs swing. <laughs> oh, man, uh, the first one today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing good. All right. Well, first of all, tell us how, how it felt to get in there and get another W. Uh, I felt good. I was uh, out for seven months. Uh, definitely didn't want it to be a unanimous decision. I've been working very hard to get a finish. Uh, all my fights in the OC so far have been decisions. So I put a lot of expectation on myself to try to get that finish. And um, I think that's kind of what roadblocks me. So growing, you know, I'm getting better. Um, just taking my time with it. Still got a lot of years to go. So performance-wise, would you say that you weren't really satisfied with the way you performed yeah. out there last I, I, So far, my UFC performances, I haven't been satisfied yet. I uh, still got to get in the groove of things that I think work a little bit harder on just pushing myself to being a better martial artist. Like I said, I put high expectation on myself. I know I'm able to finish these guys with submissions, with, with knockouts. I just got to, you know, find that part of me and uh, go out there and perform it when, the, when it matters. Well, you're still young in the sport, and, uh, you know, you've always talked about room to grow, but um, how, how much of the strides been since your, your first uh, fight in the UFC? You seem a lot different. You seem a lot more comfortable out there. Yeah, I felt a lot more comfortable. I mean, uh, my first UFC fight, I went out there shaking my boots, man. I was so tight, and uh, this was all new to me. So I'm, I'm still, you know, growing into it. it. It's a lot more common now, and I just got to find it when I'm out there in the lights and uh, performing. Because, like I said, I know I'm capable of uh, big finishes and big submissions. I just got to put that out there when, like I said, when it matters. What do you mean by um, putting it out there? Because, you know, getting the win is the most important thing, yeah. obviously. But what, did you not see opportunities to finish? Or were there, what, what would you say happened? There were opportunities. I had a lot of opportunities to finish. I kind of just I just didn't do it. I kind of just, like, knew it was there without putting my full effort into it. And I, you know, was just didn't perform the way I know I could perform. So that's honestly that's all I could say. We were looking at fighters based on the numbers next to their names. Given who your brother is and what your last name is, a lot of people just wanted you right in the top 10, right in the top. Now you're 15, where do you, do you want to go up by threes, fours, fives, or where do you see yourself in terms of the numbers going up? Um, oh, as in the rankings. Yes. I, th I thought you were saying I was 15. I'm like, dude, I got this beard. <laughs> I'm trying to look like I'm at least like 19, 20. But uh, no, I mean, uh, um, Chris Clay is, you know, I don't think he's ranked up there yet. So I mean, I'm still, still 15, 14. I, I'm not in the top 10 yet. I don't feel like I belong in the top 10 yet, so I still have some work to do, obviously. And uh, I know I'll, I will get there. I will get there with the right work, with the right people. I uh, went out to Albuquerque for a little bit, got some work in Milwaukee. So uh, definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things. Um, just like I said, becoming a better martial artist and growing as, a, as an individual, as, a, as an adult, and taking this opportunity, not so lightly. You know, I, at first I was just like, I made it in the UFC, I made it. And now I'm in the UFC and I have goals. And, I still have a lot of growing to do for those goals. What was the biggest improvement you feel like you had after spending time at Jackson's? Um, I would just say uh, different looks. You know, I, I was in Milwaukee pretty much every one of my camps, so training with the same guys, you know what they're going to do every day. I got game plans for my guys back at home just because I trained them so much. So going out to Albuquerque, uh, it was a different look, different style. People from all around the world, Russia, China, all in one big group. And uh, you know they, they made me explore my game a little bit, make me kind of have to change up a little bit, like kind of in a fight. You know, I'm not gonna go out there knowing what the guy's gonna do. I have to go out there and react. And that's how Albuquerque felt. I went out there and reacted to what these guys threw at me. They had different different styles, and it was cool to see a lot of martial artists under one roof, trying to get each other better, changing each other's perspective on martial arts and uh, as the fighting. Do you feel like you'd go out there and do that again? Oh, for sure. I'm gonna do that every camp. Um, not not only because Wisconsin is freezing, it's <laughs> it's hard to cut weight and be cold. So. No, but uh, like it was just an uh, eye-opener, and it was really, really fun. And Albuquerque reminds me a lot of Milwaukee, honestly. There's not much to do there besides train and uh, stay focused on the goal. Now, that's a very humble thing to say, because most guys, you see them instantly say, I should be number one. I'm the best fighter, and they got like two fights of their name. Training with guys like that and seeing how it is, did that really help instill that humbleness in you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, like they say, there's, there's not only one path to success, so... You know, Duke has uh, successful fighters from our gym, and uh, Albuquerque has a lot of successful fighters from them gyms. And, uh, you know, why not put all the, the knowledge together under one and try to create your own success with two different mindsets and two different perspectives? So, um, like I said, Al Albuquerque was honestly a blessing for me and Anthony to be out there. Now, is there any harm in combining gyms that way? Because Duke's is a huge mega gym, and Jackson Wink's a huge me If you start combining them, then you really only got like five other mega gyms before you're fighting dudes in, you know, out of Ohio at some gym and wherever. Um, I mean, I guess you could look at it that way, but I mean, they, I don't really see it as a problem. You know, I mean, I mean, I might fight some guys from Greg Jackson's gyms or they might fight some guys from our gym. And I mean, that's part of the sport. All these guys are out here, you know, we're, we're it's not like we hate each other. We're out here trying to 
beat each other up. That's it <laughs> for for business, and it's fun. You know, like uh, I don't go in here thinking like I'm gonna hate my opponent. I mean, obviously I want to beat him up and hurt him, but at the end of the day, it's just it's our job, it's our sport, and this is our passion. So I don't think there'll be any any confusion or harm in that. Is it possible that your next camp will be entirely at Jackson Wink? Um, I, I don't honestly. I wouldn't say that. I would say I would like to go back and forth. I would probably like to start my camp there, get in really good shape, uh, elevation, and uh, like I said, they, they pushed me to different paces. So I think I would go back and forth. Not only that, I just grew up in Duke's gym. You know, I was I've been with Duke since I was 13 years old. So he's seen me grow up as a as an adult. He's pretty much like my father. So. You know, I wouldn't leave that. I, I honor my gym, and I honor being from Milwaukee. I, I'm going to represent my hometown. So I could never for sure leave and train somewhere else. I would definitely hop back and forth. What was it like initially? Um, as an outsider, it was somewhat surreal to see you guys there, yeah. especially given uh, Anthony's history with Cowboy in particular. Initially, were you guys were you feeling like, all right, we're the outsider? How long did it take to kind of get, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to get comfortable and feel like you were being welcomed? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, when you go to new gyms, there's that that ego yeah, there like yeah. they're trying to hurt you and they're trying to prove a point we went there it was just more of a you know they were trying to help us get better so we felt that's like that we were going to stay three days for just sparring and we ended up staying three weeks and i just felt like at home you know it was just it was so welcoming uh every fighter there was so humble and so so involved in the martial art that there was no ego to try to hurt each other it was more of a a positive vibe and you know we shared that with one another and we all felt like we fit in right away Whose idea was it to go initially, you or your brothers? Uh, it was actually Izzy's idea, Izzy's wrestling. Okay. He was like, come out there, get some different looks. And uh, Anthony was like, hey, you want to come with? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll definitely leave. I don't want to stay in the cold. <laughs> so, and speaking of him, I mean, this is the first time that you fight on the same card since 185, yep. right? And obviously that was not a great night mm -hmm. for you guys. Um, and you're the, the table setter. Yeah, yeah. Did you feel that pressure? Okay, I need to win so that I don't affect him. Like 185, you know, you wanted to get the ball rolling on, yeah. a, on a good note. Were you thinking about that today? No, I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. You know, we, we're two different fighters. We have uh, two separate careers. At the end of the day, it's my career, my legacy that I'm gonna leave behind, and it's his legacy that he'll leave behind. And that shouldn't affect the way one of it, uh, we fight. You know, I mean, it's obviously sad to see if your brother got hurt or got sure. finished, but we're, we gotta take control of our reality, and tonight is the reality we have to take control of. The reason I ask is because uh, after 185, mm -hmm. he said it affected him yep. to see you lose. So uh, excuse me. That was an excuse. Yeah, All right. excuse I didn't know he was an excuse nah, maker. Nah, nah, nah. No, I always give him crap for that. But uh, you know, we just had to sit down and talk about it because, like I said, it's it's two separate careers. You know, right. at the end of the day, he had to take control of that reality. I had to take control of my reality. 185 was a learning lesson for both of us. I, I got finished, and I uh, definitely made me change my perspective on things and made me realize how much I love the sport. Just because I got finished doesn't mean I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna keep going and keep getting better. And same with him. He, you know, he got beat up for that fight, and he improved, made some adjustments, um, lost his last fight. But you know, we're not quitters. We're gonna keep going and keep doing what we love. This is our passion. Considering he's your brother, and you train with him, and you travel with him to train, what are your guys' Christmas dinners like? Do you separate the two? Or are you always in this zone of fighting, or how do you take a step away from all of this? Oh man, we live together, so I, <laughs> we see each other at each other's worst moments. <laughs> but uh, now we, we we live pretty much normal lifestyles. Um, you know, Anthony's obviously he's he's the worst. He eats m worse than I do, so he'll eat a little bit more. But uh, yeah, we uh, we keep it. Oh, sorry if I kicked you. We we keep it chill. You know, we're, we're normal people outside of the fights. When we get in the fights, we're both in our zone. Um, when he's in a fight, I, I like to be in the zone too, just just to be that positive support for him, and that what makes me better as well. You know, like being there for when he doesn't even need me, but I still want to get better and help him get better.